This is Gareth Southgate, and this is the Three Lions Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Three Lions podcast. My name is Russell Osborne and this is an independent England football supporters podcast. I hope you're well uh, and catching up on sleep as and where you can, uh, especially if you've been watching all the early morning games in the Women's World Cup. Coming up on this episode, I will be joined once again shortly uh, by the Evening Standards, Dom Smith and also David Gorton who has been in Adelaide watching our Lionesses at the Hindmarsh Stadium. So let's crack on. Firstly, on the Lionesses front, it's great news to hear that Kira Walsh hasn't suffered an ACL injury that was initially feared by all of us, uh, and I'm quite sure herself in that very moment. Whether she'll be risked in the future games, days and weeks, uh, or as far as England progress, we'll have to wait and see. But I'll imagine Barcelona will probably be watching from behind the sofa uh, with their hands over their eyes. And as we reach the final games of the group stage, we are starting to see how the knockouts are going to unfold. Uh, Now, due to the timings of the tournament, It was a little strange to see Group A uh, with Switzerland, Norway, the Philippines and New Zealand. That was concluded before Germany and Colombia had even played their second game. Uh, That was a little bit odd, that one. Uh, Speaking of that game, that was a great one. The Colombian opening goal by Linda Casado. uh, Absolute cracker. Turned into quite the game with Germany equalising from the spot on pretty much 90 minutes, only for Colombia to go and snatch it deep into injury time. Real entertaining one, that one. Uh, Of course, Germany, former holders of the World Cup. Switzerland and Norway are both through from Group A. Co-hosts New Zealand are out. Uh, And I can't help thinking that Norway have some behind-the-scenes business that is holding them back as a team. Uh, Group B was concluded and following their defeat to Nigeria, Australia eventually topped the group after beating Canada 4-0. So the Aussies and Nigeria move forward and Canada, perhaps surprisingly, going home with Ireland. Canada were maybe some people's outside tips for the, the title. Of course, managed by Bev Priestman, English Bev Priestman who'd previously been part of the, the Lionesses set-up. Um, so, yeah, a little surprising that Canada have gone out. Group C has seen both Spain and Japan also qualify, uh, both of them meeting in their last game. Japan seeing off the Spanish quite easily with a 4-0 win. I wonder, could we be seeing a uh, potential winner there in the form of Japan? Not sure, we'll have to see how they go. Now, before our game with China, which kicked off at the same time as Denmark against Haiti, Group E was concluded. Uh, The group featuring holders USA, well, they went into the tournament with high hopes, but had failed to really deliver. And their last game against Portugal, that was a potential banana skin that they eventually came through uh, with just a nil-nil draw. Uh, my word, with Portugal hitting the post in the last minute, it could have ended oh so differently. Uh, but America, they finished second to the Dutch, who put seven past Vietnam. So on to our game, which is, I'm sure you're well aware, indeed China won England six. It was their biggest win at the World Cup or at a World Cup, since they recorded the same scoreline in 2007 when they beat Argentina uh, by the same scoreline, 6-1. Now, it was the sixth meeting between the two sides who last met in 2015 when China won 2-1. Let's not also forget that China are the current Asian champions. Um, So just like the Lionesses, current European champions, uh, of which 
It was, of course, the one-year anniversary of that famous game just the day before this one. Uh, a tournament in which Serena Weigman, of course, didn't medal with the team. How times change. Uh, this time, though, this game, uh, she's gone with a formation of 3 4 1 2. Uh, Mary Epps in goal, Jess Carter returned, Millie Bright, Alex Greenwood, Lucy Bronze, Georgia Stanway, Katie Zellum, Rachel Daly, Lauren James, Alessia Russo, and Lauren Hemp. Uh, as always with Serena Weigman, it paid off. And now I'm pleased to say I'm once again joined by the Evening Standards' Dom Smith, who, uh, whilst he's still on his holiday, has kindly given us some of his time. Uh, And like the last time we spoke, I've had to rely on the highlights. Uh, Dom, hello there. You well? I'm very well, especially after watching England's performance. Ah, Good stuff. Did you watch it on the phone again or did you find somewhere a little bit more convenient? No, I found a beach cafe and watched it there over some lunch. So it was, oh. it was slightly, it was slightly nicer this time. Both, both the quality of the football and kind of the, the, the size of the screen I was watching on. <laughs> oh, very nice. Yeah, nice little beach cafe. That sounds sounds very nice. So, there are any other England fans watching with you? Uh, none that weren't related to me. Actually, it was, gotcha. it was a small turnout from the Smiths, and that was it. <laughs> I love it. Um, well, after two underwhelming 1-0 wins. Um, I guess this is just what the doctor ordered. Handbrake well and truly taken off, wasn't it? Yeah, I I sensed that it might be, but I didn't quite think that it would be this emphatic. Um, Yeah, England were, you know, England played sort of a 3-5-2 sort of system, you know, a few arguments over what it really looked like, but what we know is that it was free-flowing and that it was, um, it allowed England to create chances and get into pockets that China just couldn't really cope with. Um, England, um, I think, really benefited from that. They they had a lot of the ball, but they also used it quite well, and they were very efficient in front of goal. So to score six in any any World Cup game is is un, unlikely, but to score it against a, a really decent um, opponent such as China is um, yeah cr- credit to the players really. Yeah, from what I can gather, that first half it was pretty much one way traffic and sort of dictated um, by Lauren James, wasn't it? Absolutely. I think I think in the end she got two goals and two assists, I believe. Um and uh, yeah, she was absolutely outstanding. You know, it was a ten out of ten performance, um, which you, you don't want to give too many of the, those away, but it really was. She she looked just a cut above everyone else. Um she had a wonderful goal. Uh, the, the second of her three was was harshly disallowed. Um but um she was involved in, in most things and, and once once it was kind of a one on one between her and another player, they sort of backed away. They they, they didn't back themselves to, to get the ball off her and and you know, she reaped the rewards and, and England reaped the rewards in a in a in a more large scale sense than that. England were brilliant and she was at, at the heart of most of it. Yeah, I saw that disallowed goal. It was almost a reversal uh, of the goal that she scored against Denmark, wasn't it? It was such a shame that it was chalked off. Yeah, absolutely, with her weak foot. Imagine being able to do that with your weak foot. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, And there we were panicking about Alessia Russo. It just took her four minutes to to get off the mark. Lauren Hemp got another one 20 minutes later. Um, Chloe Kelly in the second half made it five. She capitalised on a, uh, oh, it was a poor error of judgment um, from the keeper. Um, and Rachel Daly yeah. um, scored the, the six on with what, five five minutes to go. It really was an all-round good performance, wasn't it? It was, absolutely. Um, and nice for some players to get some goals who maybe you wouldn't have expected to get on the scoreline. I think Lauren Hemp went through the whole of the Euros last year without scoring I believe that's right maybe she got one um against Norway I can't quite recall but certainly she she was very important in this match hemp her pace particularly and it was nice for her to get her uh, England's second goal um yeah. so yeah very good with the with the highlights that I saw obviously it didn't really show a great deal of with six goals is like the the highlights I saw they just squeezed those in so I didn't really get to see um, as much as Katie Zellum, as as I'd really hoped, she took the uh, the place of Kira Walsh, who obviously uh, is out injured. How did she perform? She got on very well, and I thought the whole midfield played very well. It was good that Stanway was taken off at half time when England were already three 0 up and cruising because she's on a yellow card and she would have been out of the next match if she had picked up another one. Um, Laura Coombs came on and was looked desperate for a goal couple of nice shots um 
so yeah, I think the midfield was 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 pretty effective, and Zellum was definitely heavily involved in that. This is, as I mentioned, a another sort of mix around of players by Serena Weidman, something that perhaps we're we're not used to, but it's it's playing dividends now, isn't it? She's obviously got she obviously knows what she wants to do, and and is feeling that she, she's capable in in changing the team around, and they're they're performing for her. Absolutely, and and she said after this match. Um, that as soon as she decided to play a, a back three system, the players straight away seemed to build trust in it and, and bought into it. And, and it, it certainly looked like that on the pitch. They, they really seemed to understand their roles, even though England haven't played a back three for any length of time under her. So, so yeah, it, it does bode well that she can chop and change, not just personnel, but also systems. It, it bodes well for England going deep into to any tournament and, uh, you know, at the front of our minds, this tournament. That's right. Well, the next game now is is real knockout football. It's Nigeria. Who I the only game I saw of Nigeria so far was the the Australia game where they they looked really good. I was I was well impressed with their with their goalkeeper. But how do you see Nigeria? Yeah, I think they're a, one of a number of dangerous sides in this World Cup who've maybe been slightly. Um, underrated by some people. I mean, right. they've got a, a fantastic striker called Oshawala who's scored a ridiculous number of goals and has an incredible scoring rate for Nigeria uh, and for Barcelona uh, over the last few years. So she, she, you have to watch out for her. I think she scored the third of, Os- uh, of their three goals against Australia. Um, but yeah, Nigeria, I feel like it's another team that England should beat, but not a team that England will expect to beat by six goals to one or anything remotely close to that. I think it could be a close game, but but of course England go in as favourites. Is that a game that you'll you'll be away for uh, again or, or you'll be big back on home soil watching it on a proper TV this time? I actually don't know. Do you know the date of the match? Uh, I do. It's going to be Monday the 7th. Oh well, I'll be I'll be fully home by then, so that's good. To, that's good to know. <laughs> You're in the comfort of your own armchair. Absolutely, yes. Love that, Dom. Thank you very much once again for for taking a little bit of time out of your holiday to speak to us. And uh, well, who knows? Maybe we can uh, chat again after the Nigeria game. Absolutely, I look forward to it. Sounds good. Thanks to Dom there. Don't forget, you can follow him on social media. Just search Dom Smith, or I think it's at Mister Dom Smith. Now, once again, I'm pleased to say. David Gorton has given us an update from the China game. This is what he has to say on it. Hi everyone, just after 11.30 Adelaide time, just got back from England's third group game in the first round of the Women's World Cup. A rather splendid 6-1 victory over China. A result which I don't think anybody saw coming, but on balance of play was no more than they deserved. Uh, It has to be said that China didn't really give us much of a threat had nothing really in the first half and didn't really have a good spell until the first 10 minutes of the second, by which time they were already 3-0 down. Um, pick of the goals in the first half being a superb strike by Lauren James. There's someone who doesn't score tappings. In fact, could have had a, a second one, but uh, one right at the end of the first half was ruled out through VAR for offside. Um, 3-1 at the start of the second half and then another cracking strike from James to make it 4 couple more goals before the end of the game. 6-1 win and maximum points. 9 out of 9, that's can't ask for more than that. On now to take on Nigeria in, I believe, Brisbane on Monday. Lauren James is going to get the plaudits for player of the match, quite rightly too. Wanted to give a shout-out to um, Jeff Carter, who came back into the side, looked a bit nervy against Haiti, but was a far more confident and assured performance this evening. And a bit of a shout-out to Katie Zellum as well, who took the unenviable task of replacing Kira Walsh in midfield and also gave a, a confidence and assured display uh, in that position. So onwards and upwards. That is the first round completed. And as far as I'm concerned, that's me done in terms of this trip to Australia. Uh, I will be heading back to the UK tomorrow. And indeed, my next live football is Starbridge against Colville Town on Saturday afternoon. Um, I am coming back over to the final. In, um, well, I can only describe it as a bit of a ludicrous schedule. And I've got a pretty much a six-day trip over here, regardless of whether England are here or not. But uh, can't miss a chance on a World Cup final. Uh, so that is what I'll be doing in a couple of weeks. But in the meantime, uh, that is it for me in terms of the um, 
the Women's World Cup fixtures for the first round. Cheers. Nice one, David. Many thanks. I uh, wish you a safe trip back to Blighty. And who knows, maybe a report from the final if the Lionesses get there. We'll see. Uh, but once again, thank you. Don't forget, you too can have your say. Just open up your phone, record your thoughts and observations and email them to 3 Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, spell 3, T-H-R-E-E. So the other knockout games we know at the time of recording are Switzerland against Spain and Norway, Japan on Saturday the 5th. Um, I think we've got to go with Spain beating Switzerland and I have to say Japan beating Norway. As I say, Norway, they don't look stable to me. Uh, and of course, Australia faced Denmark the same day we face Nigeria. Can Australia go another step further as the home nation? I think they could. Anyway, a little bit more on Nigeria as they await us. This will be our fourth meeting. Now, we last met in 2004 in a friendly at Reddin's Majeski Stadium. I can't think off the top of my head what that stadium's called now. Uh, But anyway, we lost 3-0. Before that, in 2002, we lost by a goal to nil in Norwich at Carrow Road. But the first meeting between the two was in the 1995 World Cup Finals in Sweden. It was in the group stage, which saw England win 3-2 that day, despite being 1-0 down. Uh, Two goals from Karen Farley and one from Karen Walker saw us through to the quarterfinals, where we then lost to Germany. Uh, However, though, more up to date. Nigeria in this competition in 2023 finished second in Group B, drawing with 0-0 with Canada. As I said earlier, surprisingly beating Australia 3-2, then they drew 0-0 with Ireland. Now this round of 16 match takes place in Brisbane on Monday the 7th of August. It's the same stadium that we played in when we opened our campaign against Haiti. Now, for those of us here in England watching on the telly, it is an 8.30 a.m. kickoff, and it will be on BBC One. At that time of the morning on a Monday, it's looking likely, for me, it'll have to be another TV highlights. So there we have it. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget, you can follow the show on social media. Just search Three Lions Podcast. Until the next time, take care of yourselves. Cheers.